Welcome back to the channel guys. Today guys, um, we're gonna be doing our AFCON review. Now guys, I'm exhausted. I've done four, this will be my fourth video today, and I'm going to do the stream later. So I'm gonna keep this short and sweet for you guys, around five minutes. Let's start with the first game. We got Morocco 1, DR Congo 1. Morocco, man, very disappointing. I expected more from them. And I think if you're Moroccan, you're thinking to yourself, wow, we really should have, we really should have um, won this game, you know? And Morocco, man, Hakimi scoring the goal right early from the corner. And you thought to yourself, okay, with the early goal, surely Morocco's going to win this by a big margin, right? It wasn't to be. They had chance after chance. And then Dior Congo had that chance. And then, of course, came the big decision, the penalty. And I'm sorry, that was an awful penalty for Bakambu. Bakambu is a player that I'd said in my pre review for the Dior Congo 1, Zambia 1, that was awful. He was terrible. Missed the penalty. And then the second half, man. Morocco kept pushing, pushing, and you could see that DR Congo actually dominated in the second half. But Morocco didn't really create any great chances in the second half. And that was a, and then DR Congo equalized. Uh, El, El, Elia and Mabopo scored the equalizer for DR Congo. And yeah, Morocco, man, they really messed up their chance. Like the 93rd minute, El Kabi with the chance right at the end, 93rd. That was close. Um, any other close chances? Yeah, there was one that 54th, 11th minute. But at the same time, though, DR Congo could have also won. Look at this chance right here in the 48th minute. Mayela. Bakambu. So I think for... um. Oh, actually hit the post, actually. Hit the post. Not save. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, DR Congo, man. They missed so many chances. And this is a good team, guys. DR Congo is a good team. It's just they have to be better in front of goal. I think certain players from Morocco shouldn't start. Like, Amala shouldn't start anymore. Uh, Adeli, Adeli is great enough. And... Uh, yeah, I just think it's really bad. And I think you can see Morocco is really struggling the left-back position because obviously Masrori is still unavailable and they're having to put Chilby there out of position at the left-back. So for Morocco, man, I still think this will be fine for them because let's be real, I think they should still be able to top the group. As for Diogo Congo, this is a great point for them, but <sighs> they got to get a win. They got to get a win. And let's see if they can win their final game against Zambia. Sorry, uh, Tanzania, Tanzania. Moving on to the other game we got here, it is uh, Zambia 1, Tanzania 1. Maybe I need to apologize to Tanzania. I ripped them apart in my review for the last um, last time we talked about them, and they were dreadful. They were really, really bad against Morocco. But I will say one thing, though, is that as bad as they were, they're defensively not too bad. Defensively, I thought they were decent. For Zambia, man, very disappointing once again. And it feels like every chance that Zambia creates is coming out from wide. They're resorting to wing play. And it's sort of like the United States in some ways. Like, you know, and whenever I watch Zambia, it's kind of like the United States. You know, a lot of our play comes through our fullbacks. It's like the same with Zambia, it seems. And that first goal from Tanzania, man. What a horrendous mistake. Kambambu, I think, is the guy. He made a horrible mistake there. Gave away the ball in a dangerous area. Samata was very intelligent. Finds Masova, and Masova scores to make it 1-0. To Tanzania, and at this point, I'm like, "Wow, are we going to see another upset?" And especially Kabawa making a dangerous challenge, a second yellow, terrible challenge. I forgot which Tanzanian player was terrible taking. Like, it, it was terrible. That had to be a second yellow. He had to be sent off. And then there was even a shout for a penalty for Tanzania. Luckily, VAR overturned it. And then the second half, man, Tanzania, man, um, they had their chances here and there. They had this chance right here in the 34th minute. Um, 47th minute, but you gotta give credit, man. Zambia sh stood up because they actually played really well in the second half. They dominated the second half, you know, and they finally got their goal from the set piece there. Pazza and Daka scoring a beautiful goal from the header. And for Zambia, man, as I said, man, I really feel like you gotta give them credit, man. Getting a draw, especially down a man coming from behind as well, but they gotta do better when it comes to chance creation. They gotta do better because as you can see right here, their chances shots were way really bad. Like. Like, they didn't really create any clear goal-scoring opportunities besides the goal. I mean, they had their few chances, but they didn't create enough. So, but you got to give credit, though. They were down a man, and Tanzania, man, they should have closed out this game. They should have finished off this game um, in the first half, to be honest with you. Um, and they didn't. And this was a really big chance, 72nd minute. Because had he had scored that, could have been huge. So, Tanzania, man, one point, ball on the group. Minus three goal difference. And for Zambia, man, they're still alive. Although, it's going to be difficult because they have to play Morocco in the final match today. Things are going to be looking difficult for them. And the final, the last game we got here is Zambia 4. I'm sorry, South Africa 4. Namibia 0. South Africa, man, take a flipping bow. Because this is a team that I think a lot of people are underestimating them. 
the Afcon, before this Afcon, you know, and especially I lost to Mali, because for me, like I said, they were the much better team that first half. They were the much better team. They just couldn't convert their chances. And Percy Tao, man, he finally scores a penalty this time. As Zane, man, the Zanege was fantastic. He was absolutely tearing apart the the, the Nibia defense, and he was just fantastic. And Masoko, man, getting that goal in the seventy fifth minute. Very, very stupid error from the Kosopo. The goalkeeper made a horrendous error. And you can see the Nibia were pushing men forward to try to get a goal back. But um, South Africa were very clinical on the counterattack. Um, and yeah, you can see right here, because possession-wise, it was a pretty even game. But you can see how dominant they were. And the Nibia, man, they just couldn't create many goal, great goal-scoring opportunities. They just struggled to break down the South African defense. And South Africa, man, they just dominated and got a thoroughly deserved win. A 4-0 win, which puts them in a really good position because... Basically, if they can beat South, if they can beat Tunisia on the final match day, they might be able to top this group. But it depends what Mali does. If Mali wins, then they can't top. But they can get second place, which would be a great achievement for them. So, like I said, those that's my quick review of the Afcon. I hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll be seeing you guys a stream in around ten minutes from now. By the time I finish this, you guys like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.